Hey crazies, we all know the difference between space and time, right? You measure space with rulers, and you measure time with clocks. Then Einstein comes along with his crazy hair and says they're just two parts of the same thing? Space-time? Who does he think he is, a scientist? How dare he disprove our feelings with facts? Oh, wait. Okay, so, so let's assume he's right about this. What the heck is time, then? This episode was made possible by generous supporters on Patreon. A major goal of physics is to make accurate predictions about the behavior of matter and light. And for centuries, that was done through three-dimensional dynamics. The study of forces and their effects on motion. Newton's laws were of pinnacle importance. Objects might sit still, but they could also move from one place to another over time. Whether or not the forces were balanced determined exactly what the objects would do. Forces determined acceleration, acceleration determined velocity, and velocity determined the path taken. It was very methodical. A leads to B, which leads to C. Dynamics is all about keeping track of vectors to predict paths. The simplest example is a straight path with steady motion. That means there are no forces on the object. Or if there are forces, they're perfectly balanced. If the object speeds up, there's an unbalanced force in the direction of motion. If it slows down, the unbalanced force is against the motion. If it changes direction, the unbalanced force is toward the new direction. That's the gist of dynamics, and it served us well for centuries. Then Einstein came along and changed everything. Well, not just Einstein, but also Minkowski, and Hilbert, and Grossman, and, and Levi Civita, all built on the ideas of Gauss, Riemann, and Christoffel. Nobody lives in a vacuum. Where was I? Right, Einstein. Einstein came along and showed how space and time are just two parts of the same thing, space-time. But if that's true, we could measure time with a ruler or space with a clock, which is actually not as weird as it sounds. Hold on. Hey, map clone, how far away is that place again? About 10 minutes. Thanks, man. So it's pretty common to give distance measurements and time units, right? Okay, maybe that's just a Midwestern thing. The point is, we actually go the other way with Einstein's model. We measure time as a distance. Multiply by the speed of light and bam, distance units. Of course, time isn't actually distance. There, there are some differences, which we'll get to later. But this new model gives us insights we wouldn't normally see. Let's say we've got a clone on a spring. His position is changing in time. Why are you using a clone? I thought it would look funny. And it did. C can't you use something else? Oh, okay, fine, I'll use a squirrel. This animation is exactly what we'd expect, out of dynamics. But Einstein and friends imagine time as just another dimension. So instead of this, we have something that looks more like this. As the squirrel bounces back and forth, he also moves up through time. We call it a space-time diagram because it has both a space axis and a time axis. Points on this diagram are called events. And this path represents all the events in the squirrel's past and future history. It's everything that has happened and everything that ever will happen to the squirrel. Well, at least what we predict has happened and predict will happen. This is just a mathematical prediction. No one actually expects him to do this forever. Treating time as if it's just another dimension turns three-dimensional dynamics into four-dimensional static geometry. Yes, static geometry. I'm only showing motion in this animation, so it feels more familiar to you. But this is more like an omnipresent and omnitemporal viewpoint. In this model, nothing moves. All these events just exist. It's a static image. Again, that's not necessarily reality. I'm not saying the past and the future are already written. This is just a model. A powerful model, but a model nonetheless. So let's see what some of those dynamics examples from earlier look like now. If a squirrel is sitting still on a table, this is its path through space-time. It's completely up and down. It's only through time. A squirrel moving steadily to the right has a space-time path like this. A squirrel moving steadily to the left has the opposite path. Accelerated paths look a little different. If the squirrel is speeding up as it moves across the table, its space-time path is curved. A similar thing happens if the squirrel slows down. Its path is also curved. Straight paths are steady motion. 
Curved paths are accelerated motion. A space-time diagram makes telling them apart extremely obvious. You don't have to consider the dynamics. You can just see it in the geometry. So far, this is all pretty general stuff. To do anything more specific, we need some math. Say we've got two events, maybe a high five in Michigan and a rocket launch in Florida. Each of them happens at a particular place and a particular time. Maybe they happen 1,200 miles apart and one day apart. But how long is the separation line directly between them? To figure that out, we're gonna need Pythagorean theorem. Yep, that thing you've probably had memorized since elementary school. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where A, B, and C are the side lengths of a triangle. In space, it tells us the straight line distance between objects or locations, given some set of coordinates. Why is that an S? You know, I, I don't actually know. Okay, Google, why is S used for position? It's short for the German word Strecke, which means root. Huh, who knew? Okay, so S is for route, apparently. Delta means change in. So this is the change in position, otherwise known as displacement. We also have a triangle in our space-time diagram, but we have a slight problem. I've been saying the entire video that space and time aren't exactly the same thing. This squirrel can move in either direction in space along the table, but it must always move forward in time. The, the forward, forward march, march of, of time, time is, is unavoidable. unavoidable. We're just pretending like it's space. Y you might say we're imagining it. The time axis is more like an imaginary axis than a real one. So let's stop dancing around it and just say it's imaginary. That means Pythagorean theorem for this triangle looks like this. We've picked up a negative sign. Space-time is non-Euclidean. That means these diagrams aren't going to obey your intuitions about geometry. These axes are perpendicular, but so are these. Seriously, these are perpendicular. This, this, and this are right triangles. All of them are right triangles. Any paths along the 45 degree diagonals have a length of zero. This picture and this picture are the same picture, just from two different perspectives. Parallelism and causality might be preserved, but angles and distances are not. The geometry is super weird. To emphasize this difference, instead of calling it a four-dimensional space-time, we call it a 3D plus 1D space-time, or just a 3 plus 1 space-time. But this model, while extremely weird, makes predictions that match reality. This equation keeps the speed of light constant. It's just the maximum speed of causality. It's the maximum speed of cause and effect. With some quick trigonometry, it predicts that time and length depend on the observer. Well, as long as you remember to use hyperbolic trig functions instead of the regular ones. It predicts a lot of weird things, but we've verified them all by experiment. They're all real things that happen. And things get even weirder when space-time is curved. Let's consider a path like this. Hey, didn't you agree not to use clones? I changed my mind. I do what I want. There are actually two possible reasons it would be curved. The first possibility is that there's a force on the clone. We mentioned that one earlier. The other possibility is that space-time itself is curved. Yes, this is a real possibility. To describe a curved path with Pythagorean theorem, we need to be a little more careful. This only works on straight paths between events. So let's imagine this curved path is just a collection of events. If the events are close enough together, then the mini path between each pair of events is approximately straight. Buckle up, crazies, it's calculus time. Each of those little straight pieces is called a line element. And since they're straight, we can use Pythagorean theorem on them. It's just like the one with the deltas, except we use a lowercase d instead. It lets us know it's a tiny change rather than a big change. This notation is really important, so you better get used to the d. Wait, th that came out wrong. You know what I mean. A line element tells us how nearby events in space-time are separated from each other. This is for what we call flat space-time, meaning there's no curvature. But the space-time around a non-rotating spherical object will look different. It's curved. The line element must be adjusted because different events have different separations. Even the time component has to be adjusted. Time can be curved. This path might be curved not because of a force, but because time itself is curved, which is kind of crazy. But the concept of curved space-time has made accurate predictions about our universe. 
deviations in the orbit of Mercury, gravitational lensing, gravitational waves, the existence of black holes, even the appearance of black holes. Time isn't universal anymore. It depends on an observer's motion and their proximity to high concentrations of matter and light. Time is relative and it can be curved. But you know what isn't relative? Causality. If one event can influence another, then the order of those events is always maintained, even in all this relativistic weirdness. So what exactly is time? Time is a representation of causality. Including a time axis in our diagram turns a dynamics problem into a geometry problem. Straight paths are steady motion, curved paths are accelerated. Space-time diagrams are powerful tools, but they're just tools. When it comes down to it, time is about causality. We may not agree on the space between two events, or the time between two events, but if they're causally connected, everyone agrees on the order of those events. Without causality, we might not even agree on past, present, and future. Causality is where our concept of time comes from. Causality is more fundamental than time. So, did I set off your Google Assistant today? Please share in the comments. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. I don't believe 2D creatures could see each other that way. I'm not sure we can imagine one or two dimensional spaces. Can they really see that 2D surface as a 3D sphere? Doesn't light need three dimensions to exist? It's just a metaphor for us, okay? I do appreciate you keeping me on my toes though. Anyway, thanks for watching.